Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Weekend, Saturday. Just trying to clean up a bit here. Uh, as you can see, the TV is gone. The part came and put it in there. Works fine, but most importantly, I've got my bench back. <laughs> and that's important. Oh, yeah, it works, babe. So, I don't know. What else have I got? I'm going to do a brake job on the last car here coming up. So, that should be pretty quick. Get rid of this. Yeah, what have I got here? Um, so, TV's done. Uh, I've got some stuff to show you guys over here on the bench, so let's bring the camera on over here. Alright, first things first. This is the uh, four jaw, and I had mentioned that I ordered a 5C adapter, which arrived for the uh, for either the three jaw or the four jaw. And when I got it and I opened it up, I'm looking at this going, oh great. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to fit, but it's not this chuck. <laughs> so I was really kind of bummed, not sure what I was going to do um, with it, so I just let it be. And then after I had the TV fixed, I was just bumming around in the garage and I looked. I go, oh, wait a minute, stupid, you got the adapter plate on it. Take the adapter off. It's a three jaw. So it fits, and it fits real tight. As before turning this video on, I actually had this mounted. And I took the screws out and I couldn't get it apart. The temperatures expanded it or something and it was stuck on there big time. So, so now I'm looking at it going, yeah, okay, so I can take the adapter plate off. Now I got spare adapter plates, but I can't use it on the uh, on the three on the little little bitty three inch guy. And I started thinking, Danny, you blew it again. You should have. I was originally I was going to buy the three incher. So I would just be able to check that out, and then I figured, you know, why don't you get the big one? Because then you can uh, use the four jaw, and I could clamp up square material or whatever in the spindex. And then I was thinking, well, dummy, you've got the adapters. You made them all three inches. You should have got the three inch. So, what the heck? <laughs> Go and get the three inch. <laughs> so now I can put this on the three inch. Oh, come on, get on there and it fits perfectly, there's no play in it and I can mount up the four inches if I want to um, and then I've got the adapters on it so I can put these on the lathe if I want so that's kind of that guy this was $39, this was $35 for the adapters so kind of cool, I can mount whatever I want I guess in the spindex so. um, ordered the 12 millimeter socket, deep socket, for $5 off Amazon, so I'm going to be able to finish this guy up. I already put this in the soft jaws and ran the threads down a little further. And when I make the new hub, this one, I didn't want to drill it all the way out, all the way through and go deep, because I didn't want to see the hole, but then wait a minute, I stuck, pressed that in there, so it's going to hide the hole. So the new one, I'm going to just drill it and tap it all the way through. And these are threaded a little bit further, so they'll be a little bit stronger. Actually, it goes in there. For, oh, wow, it goes in there all the way. Yeah, that's, that's going to be nice. So whenever the 12 milliliter 6-point deep socket comes, I hope it is cheap, because i got to saw off the 3-8 drive part, get it short enough, so I'll just have a set screw that clamps on it, and I can get that guy finished, which would be nice. Um, titanium. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you guys the titanium. Uh, it's kind of cool. It does machine. Here's the ring. Oop, wrong way. It came out pretty nice. I'm kind of thrilled with it. So that's exciting. I'll show you guys how I machine the titanium. Um, got some pictures to share here, and I haven't printed them out yet, right? <laughs> Uh, alright, so I gotta pause the camera and go get the pictures that I'm gonna share. Actually, I'm gonna show these pictures a little different way so that I can zoom in and do a bunch of different things with this video. These pictures are, is this Jim's? Yeah. Okay, so 
This is Jim Waganowski, or I don't even know how to pronounce that, but he sent in some really nice pictures. Um, he just got uh, a new lathe, because I'm looking at pictures, or some of the pictures you'll see, this machine is like brand new. But he did his own knobs, which is really cool. Uh, I like that. Yeah, so that's one. There's his lathe. Looks like he's getting ready to make another knob, probably for the tail stock, but clean machine. And I had emailed him asking if he um, got rid of this chip guard over here. I haven't heard back on that. Actually, did he respond? Because he did send another picture. Yeah, this one. Uh, gonna... Oh, he did make them. Okay. Because I was looking at it and I told him he should make the spacers in here to get rid of the friction that's in there. So that should be the next thing he can do. And he was mentioning that uh, a lot of his capabilities are limited because he doesn't have that much tooling yet and he still wants to get a mill and all that. But he did send the picture here. Where uh, I bring this back up. Nope, wrong thing. Mail. <laughs> Uh, I just opened the picture up, that's right. There it is. He made the spacers in there and he says it's a lot smoother because the friction's gone in here. So that's cool, Jim. Very nice, very nice. Let me lower that, go back to... There it is. So Jim's coming along. It's looking really nice. I think it was another picture. Yeah, he copied the, the hole down or whatever you want to call it, the locking uh, the tailstock down. So, nice job on that, and he's getting good finishes, too. I like the finishes on this stuff. Really cool. Looks like he had to make another spacer in there, but he's got it made, man. So, that was the first set of pictures that came in. This set, I forgot who it came from. Probably Mike? No. Who's got pictures here? Shoot. All right, now I lost. Here's attachments. Oh, it's in, okay, is that one, is that, yeah, this is my, yeah, Michael Bashaw sent in shop pictures, which I love, this is a busy shop, boy, look at this, he did apologize, I guess he's trying to, he's in a transition of moving from some shack or something like that, setting up shop, but he's, this guy is really geared for woodworking, too, he's a professional, because so I'm looking at all the clamps here, and he did tell me, yes, he doesn't work for Airborne, <laughs> so, but pretty cool shop, pretty cool. And looking around in the next picture, it was like kind of a kick because I'm seeing an eight track up there, so it tells me he's an old bird. But I love this. This this is incredible. This is one unit. I'd love to have that in a lock on every single drawer. And he's got more of them in the back here. This this would just be a dream for me to get something like that. But kind of running out of room. He's got his welder here. So really nice job. Look at the woodworking he's done. This is great. <laughs> Little, I think that's PVC holding it. So I love his work. Shop's coming along. He's looking really nice. So thanks for sharing. I really appreciate that. All right. Well, let's get on with the videos. All right. I probably should have recorded this before doing it, but I already ran it. This is the piece of titanium, 0 0.590 by 10 inches long for $15 from China. Just arrived today, and I know I've watched another YouTube on drilling this stuff, and they say you have to go fast and aggressive, and it does get hot, let me tell you. But I just grabbed a junk bit, stuck it in there, and I'm pushing hard and fast on it, and it just goes right in. <laughs> nice. But I want to see how this stuff polishes up. If I'm going to make a ring, toe rings out of this stuff. Where is? Let's try medium Scotch Brite first. See what it does. Well, it kind of shines up here. But try the heavier stuff. That looks pretty good. What happens if I try flits on it? Let me get some of that. Rag, rag, need a rag. There we go. So if I can drill it, and I know I can.
turn it, I should be able to bore it everything here. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. <laughs> Not too bad. I'm going to get the rest of it off of there before it gets on my collet. Nah, it's not that shiny. Oh yeah, for the rings I used to buff them. So, this is highly doable, guys. I guess I'll record doing some of this. I don't have time to do it right now. I'm not sure how they cut it. It's a very unique finish that's on that right now. But I'll be making titanium rings here shortly. This is crazy stuff, boy. I'm using WD-40 for lubrication. You can drill it. You can't make major steps because I went from what was it? I went from that small drill that you saw to quarter inch to five sixteenths to three eighths, and it just drills nicely. And the other carbide boring tool didn't do a nice job so I changed to this one. It's just it's just nice. <laughs> it's gotta keep a lot of lubrication in there I guess. <laughs> it should actually have a saddle stop in place. I don't ruin my cutter. But that is shiny, that is beautiful finish. Whatever this stuff is, and it's like wow. Nice shavings coming off of it. Just curls. Just beautiful. Titanium. I think I'm gonna like working. The last thing is I don't know. I should actually try. Let's see if I can use a cutoff tool. Uh I guess I use the carbide one rather than high speed steel. Will it cut? Is that in there? Yep. Alright, do you look like you're straight? No. Now you look straight. Right? Yeah. Oh, this would be great if I can just bore right into this, because I don't know if a hacksaw is going to do it. Oops, get that out of the way. Alright, just come back someplace. Uh, oh, actually, I'm too far on this. Yeah, I'll make the ring about that thick, but I'll go over a little bit further. WD-40, let's see what you're going to do. Real, I got to go real low speed. Not cutting it, not cutting it, but not very well. I'm really forcing it. Probably going to ruin that tool. Let's see what it did to it already. No, it's still sharp. I wonder if it hacksaws. I'm bring the hacksaw over and see. Otherwise, I gotta try a high speed steel cutter. Is it hacksaw? Oh, it hacksaws real easy. Woohoo! Alright. Because then how am I going to finish the other face? I wonder if it bevels this way. Can I bevel it? Let's get rid of this guy. And get something out to bevel with this guy. Probably hit it right about there. Uh, more towards the tip. Yeah, still in low gear. It bevels easily. How nice is that? Wow. I'm gonna keep hitting this protection cover. Yeah. Stuff. Look at that, that is gorgeous. 
can't believe the finish. It's like it's already been puffed. Well, uh, I guess I'll hacksaw it off. Then I gotta figure out how to hold it to finish the other side. Uh, just parting at high speed steel. Real slow RPM and just push hard and it goes in there. Wow. And that guy is okay, I hope. <laughs> you can't get this blade. It's just as sharp as it ever was. There's the ring down there. Wow. Oh, you hot. <laughs> yeah, I guess as expected. It's not much smoke. But it's cooling off. Wow. That is crazy. So I guess try to finish it off. <laughs> It just occurred to me, I never showed everybody how I buffed the inside of the ring. Standard Dremel little buffing wheel. And the buffing compound, just regular black, high, high grid or whatever you want to call it. Get your hands filthy dirty, but it does it. <laughs> you gotta hold it better. That's all there is to it, guys. Buffed it up. Does it pretty quick too. Nice. <laughs> All right, so now you know my trick on that. Well, there it is, guys. My first titanium ring. Came out kind of nice. Learning curve, but size two. <laughs>